Gadget UK here again. This time I'm having a look at my ZX81. Uh, you saw me got this out on, uh, on one of my loft clear out videos just recently. It's got a couple of scratches and things on it. I'm hoping uh, it'll clean up a little bit. Um, but I thought before I do anything, I'm just going to take the back off this and we'll have a look at the inside of it. It's not in too bad condition really, apart from that mark there and those couple of scratches. Um, I've, and as I showed on the previous video, I've got a 16k RAM pack for this as well. So I think I'll perhaps take that to pieces and have a quick look at that as well. Um, and then check the power supply make sure that's okay and I might just uh, try powering it up um, I've not got a screen I don't think I, I probably need to do a composite mod what is the RF coming out? yeah um, I probably need to do a composite mod or something I think you can do it you probably need to add a transistor or something in there to boost the sync uh, level I think or something along those lines um, but I do have um, well if I can find a lead I've got that little uh, Lilliput um, TV that I found in the loft as well I could perhaps use that with this um, it's certainly a good easy way of connecting up I think. So it's a hell of a long time since I've been inside one of these, I can't even remember how you get in them. Um, I mean you can see a couple of screws there, I think I'll start by removing those but I'm just wondering if there's a couple under these front feet. Yes there are a couple of screws under the front feet there so I can stick those back on with some fresh double sided tape afterwards. And there was another screw as well on one of the back posts there so there were three and then I removed the other two here. Didn't need to take this foot off. So I don't know how well that's coming out, it's got a strange discoloration to the underneath of the uh, PCB there, I don't know whether that needs cleaning with something or not, it's just a really mysterious shade of green, it could be a conformal coating, can you see it's like it's, it's not the same thickness and evenness all along there. So in order to get the board out it looks like uh, that screw there not sure what's holding it down here, I think maybe this nut, I don't know, no it's not, that's just holding the heatsink on. Uh, oh there's a screw down there as well, yes yeah, so there's a screw um, in each of those positions there. And I have grounded myself before I start touching this by the way. So straight away here, I don't know if you can see, if uh, I can see some dry joints, can you see down here? We've got a dry joint there, I mean it's barely not even connected at that point there, and over here as well, so, um, and over here. Yeah, so I'm going to need to do a little bit of uh, touch-up work on this, I think, just to make sure we've got good solder connections on all those chips. Um, there's not going to be much on this, you know, just like a CPU and a ULA and a RAM perhaps, and then just one or two supporting logic chips or something. Not very much at all, I don't think. Um, so as you get the board out, it looks like it's this screw here and that one over there, and then I'm guessing there's going to be a ribbon that holds the, uh, you know, that connects the keyboard up. I'll have to be very, very, very careful when I come to disconnect that. So there we go, uh, I've got the board out, let's have a quick look. So I think that, uh, that looks like a Z80, I could be wrong. Um, it's an NEC780C, I suspect that's a Z80. Um, and I think we've got the ULA down here, and we've got a ROM up there, perhaps containing basic and stuff. Um, and then a couple of RAM chips here. Um, I'm guessing those are going to be like half a K each or something like for two four bit chips to give you uh, you know half, um, two four bit one k chips effectively to give you one k of eight bit ram i think so yeah the edge connector is going to need cleaning up a bit it's pretty dirty that but i think um are there any electrolytics yeah there's a couple of electrolytics here i might just swap those out anyway just to be on the safe side i think um i'll solder those few points underneath and then i might just give it a power up and see what happens so before I solder those points I thought I'd show you up close, uh, you can see we've got a dry joint here, hopefully you can see that nice and clearly, that one's not so clever, uh, that one I think is uh, not so clever, there was another one, Listen, yeah one down here as well I think, it's not, that one's not too bad, but yeah there are a few, um, certainly these two, they don't look very clever at all. Um, yeah, get some solder on there. So I've re-soldered the solder points on there that were bad. I've not cleaned them up with uh, some isoprop or anything yet. Uh, I'll do that afterwards. Um, but it's worth just pushing these. I just pushed that chip down and it clipped in. You could feel it slide. You could hear the ROM then. It's like this slip out. You get uh, what's commonly known as chip creep. Um, when these things have not been used for a very long period of time and stuff, the chips can slide out the sockets a little bit. Um, so I think I'm just going to put this back in the case now, connect up the keyboard, um, I'll check the power supply voltage um, and we'll give it a try. 
So I'll just check the uh, voltage coming out of this power supply. 13.78, so if we look at the back of it, uh, does it has it got any markings on it? Uh, it's got one on the front, and you can see that just down there. I can't read the damn thing. Yeah, output 9 volt DC. So yeah, it's about right. It's measuring 13.78 volts. Under load it's probably going to drop a bit to 11 or 12 volts probably. But these things are never accurate in terms of what they say on the front anyway. So um, that should be alright. And there is a set, I think there's a regulator in there, so that'll get dropped down to 5 volts. So this is more of a test circuit than anything. I will get some heat shrink tubing on here. Um, but what you've got here is a 2N3904 transistor. Um, and its base, which is the middle pin, is coming out to click into pin 16 of the ULA. Um, and then the collector, I think it is, is on the... Um, Plus five, which you know is easy to you know it's this large trace that comes down here, so just scratched a tiny bit of it off, stuck the collector straight to there, and then the emitter, which is floated, I know you can see this, is where you, your new composite video comes out, and you also need to pull it to ground, um, and the nearest ground is over here on the underneath the side of the modulator, and then I've desoldered one of the two of the points here where the wires were feeding the modulator um, as standard, and then took the you know the top of the modulator and the center pin that comes uh, you know that comes out of this connector here. Um, there's a resistor inside the modulator, and just desoldered that and then soldered the wire onto it. I can show you that later. Um, but the idea, like I say, is to um, encapsulate some of these with heat shrink tubing. Um, but it's okay underneath there because you know it stands off. This nut stands the thing off the bottom of the case anyway. So I mean, it looks a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a dead bug type squished mess there but um, I will isolate this part here um, just so that there's no chance of it shortening onto anything else and perhaps shorten the length of this wire and stuff um, but I do need to do another revision to this now anyway because um, on this um, issue 1 um, ZX81 clearly the brightness there is very 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 low so there we go you can see the cursor bottom left there the screen is very very grey um, it's very dark. I'm sure it should be whiter than that. I think because it's a Rev1, um, you know, I can issue one board. Um, it needs uh, a different mod. I think Jules Percullen, um recently did a mod to the ZX81. Um, I just vaguely remember seeing it on his channel, and I think he had to do something a little bit more on the issue one in order to get a, you know a half decent picture. Because as you can see, that's you know barely viewable. When I can press a key here, you can see load. Uh, yeah, all the keys work. I've tested every key on the keyboard here. It's not easy to press actually and film at the same time. Um, I'll show you what I've done just to get that working, but I do think, like I said, more is required on this issue one. So I've just tested this and it works, but I just thought I'd show you uh, when I go inside this. It's hard to believe the assembly really. You've got two, two boards in here, look at this. Joined by like a flexible, well, semi-flexible um, wire thing on the other end. It looks like, is it screwed in? This. It doesn't seem to want to come out. Um, I'm gonna have to try and bend it a little bit, I think. Carefully, though, it is coming out. Not easily, it's, it feels stuck in this corner here somewhere. Can't see a screw. There's quite a few caps in here. There's more caps in here than there is on the motherboard. It's unbelievable, really. Well, I'm glad I went in here. Have you seen the state of this? Look, you see these, these interconnect wires here. Look, they're just sort of, you know, extended. They're not being cut off. Look how close some of them are. It's uh, unbelievable. Look at those two there. I'm amazed that never caused a problem. So, I'm not going to snip these off. I think I'd like to leave them, but I think I'm just going to bend them um, away from each other so that there's no chance any of the ones that are really close to each other, there's no chance they're going to short uh, those on the same connection anyway. That's all right. I just thought I'd uh, show you that. I thought you might find that interesting. So I've assembled the PCB that uh, Jules Percullum, um created and demonstrated. Um, I'll post a link um, in the description to this video um, to his channel and his video um, and the um, link on his website as well to the uh, schematics and track layout for this. I've copied his exact track layout here um, as you can see just to save myself having to, you know, lay this out myself. He's, you know, it's pretty optimal the way he's done that. There's very few links and things. The board needs a bit of tidying up, you know, you can sand this, it needs filing down. And you can see, you know, I've, when I've split it, we've still got a bit of the edge there, so I can file that all down. Um, but right now I'm going to connect some wires up, and we'll connect this to the ZX81 and see what difference that makes. So as you can see, uh, I've got my wires all joined up here to this little board. I think what I'm going to do um, is mount it in here. I've tested and it will fit actually. Um, 
without uh, you know causing any problems it's not connecting to anything so I've got like a, a special double sided pad that's got like a plastic oh, it's like an aluminium grip and you can bend it down and it'll grip that PCB to stop it moving um, so I think I'll use those two things things in combination double side tape it down then use the aluminium grip to hold it um, I'll perhaps show that later if it's anything of interest but we'll give this its first test now so you've seen the before where it was like really washed out and it almost looked inverse um, the power's near the front so let's plug that in look at the difference that's phenomenal um, I'm amazed that's worked first time. I was half expecting to have missed me to have missed something off the uh, diagram. Um, you know the layout there, Mr. Component or Mr. Join, but that's fantastic. Um, I'll reassemble this now, I think, um, and have a quick play. So I think what I'm going to do is mount that like that there, and then obviously I'll you know bend this down, and it's sticky on the back, so these cables will be crimped under there like that. Um, it's not going to move because it's held pretty tight you know there's very little clearance there that just snugly holds it in place so once that's once this thing's stuck down here it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to go anywhere it's you know if you can think of a tidier way of doing it please let me know um, in the video description i know one of the things jules percullum did is he took the pcb out of the modulator and this board is about the right dimensions to fit inside there but i don't really want to interfere with the original modulator if i'm honest i'd rather just leave it as it is the only thing i did need to do is um you know disconnect the center pin inside the modulator um, you know and you can see the one or two solder points removed from the board there so the mod modulator is no longer powered um, so I think that'll be okay. Um, I think that'll be fine. It's not. It's not going to go anywhere. Once this this PC is bent down, like I say, it'll, it'll be like that, and it's very, very, very tight there. It's not going to go anywhere. So there you go. Not too bad. There's, like I say, the underneath of this part here is sticky, um, so the cables are actually stuck to it. It can't really go anywhere, you know, um, and it's, it'll be like I say held down um, at this point anyway by the lid. So uh, yeah, that's all right. I think. So one of the final things here before I reassemble this, I've just put uh, some of those little um, copper heat sinks. They're not probably not copper, it's probably like a, an alloy, to be honest. Um, they'd be a lot more expensive if they, they were pure copper, these heat sinks from China. But they do um, dissipate a fair bit of heat, these, you know, I've tested these on various other systems, on other chips and things. Um, and the ULA does get very hot in this issue one, ZX81 here. Um, the Z80, I'm not so worried about, I can always swap that, it's off the shelf. It's the same with the ROM, yeah, it's a mask ROM, but I could always put an EEPROM or something on there if that ever failed. Um, um, so it really is just this chip that I'm worried about heat-wise. So in terms of these rubber feet, yeah, the sticky stuff, once you've pulled them off, it doesn't, they don't really stick back on very well. So I think what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll just cut some double-sided tape to the right size, stick it on there, and then pull them back down. It should be all right, I think. There you go, all the feet stuck back in. Um, I did give this a wipe down earlier with a bit of silicon. Um, I'll just give it another clean now, show you the end result. So there we go, there's a the final result, uh, it's looking pretty clean, I've got the RAM pack in the back there, 16k, um, point of the screen, a very small screen, connect the power, I can find the damn connector, it was never easy to get these connectors back in at the time, I remember, there we go, it takes a bit longer because of the RAM, but there we go, it's working, so yeah, load, how on earth do you get? Close. Not sure the screen's displaying it very well because it looks like we've got some of the text missing there. Well, you can see I'm missing the keyboard at this stage. Uh, I've got a brand new one here from RWAP Software, so uh, yeah, it looks pretty good actually. The typeface is ever so slightly different. Um, it's very, very similar though. It's for the most part, it's. Um, you wouldn't notice the difference really unless you were comparing side by side um, the keys are a bit whiter but I guess these are perhaps a bit faded over time anyway but uh, yeah the ribbons um, it's ironic isn't it, I always say oh yeah it's not this, it's not that and lo and behold as I said I tested the keyboard yeah I had with the exception of like three or four keys up here and they weren't working and I examined the ribbons and it would split I've actually cut these now but they'd split right at the point where it joins the you know the part that's um, not got the conductive material where you can actually connect to it you know it's covered with plastic so I've cut it at that point where it'd split but you can't expose it you can't expose these traces again so it's a shame but if you get that problem where it's split like mine had you need a new one so um, yeah and in terms of getting this off 
you can see this gap here from the inside you can just about see a little, little tiny little gap there and if you just push with the screwdriver um, it will come up in that corner now some of the guides out there show you just using a hot air you know a hot air dryer or something um, to warm up the glue and that would get it off pretty easy you can see it's a bit wrinkled this because I just literally peeled it off um, I don't care it's not going to be reused that's it is useless you can't do anything with that really um, so this one's got self adhesive on the back here some good 3m uh, self adhesive so what I need to do is you know feed it through um, and then peel off, peel off the adhesive and it should do the trick hopefully before I do that I'm going to clean this uh, just wipe it down with a bit of isoprop here and clean the edges because you get dirt built up into the corners and things here so there we go that's all the glue removed there's a few streaks there still from the glue but it's dead smooth that so um, I just need to just feed this through there um, and then just experiment with getting it in the right position just to make sure it's it's going to fit okay it's not as flat here as I would like. I think I need to heat this up with a hot air dryer. I've had a go and try and massage the keyboard up that way just a little bit because it's not quite as flat there. So there we go, all reassembled second time. Um, I got this area totally flat and the way I did it is used a hot air dryer. Heated it up with a hot air dryer and then just put pressure in like that in that direction. And eventually, after 10 minutes of doing that, you can see it's, it's pretty much sat level. In there, I don't know how well, it's just a little bit of a ripple just at the very bottom there, but that's pretty much perfect. Um, and I'll just show you this on the main TV here, just so you can see how much better the picture is actually over that shitty little LCD I was using. Look at that, that's super clear. Jules Percolum did a brilliant job on that circuit there. Um, and as you can see, uh, the keyboard is now uh, working fine. Three, four, five, six, seven, let's try the next row. Q, W, E. R T Y U I L P A S D F. Yeah, so this is working fine. No problems at all. So those new keyboards from our web sof software are very good as well. Uh, let's just do the obligatory hello world. I'll just reset it there. You don't get a picture whilst it's resetting. Um, and in fact, I'll show you something else. On an LCD, you get the same thing. If I was to do shift load now, just watch, hit return. You lose sync. Because you've got the, what you'd see on a CRT now, you get the black and white bars, let's, you know, moving around, waiting for the tape, and then you would get lines, you know, like you do on a Spectrum, whilst it's loading, I think, from what I remember. Um, and then when the pick, when it comes back and you get, a, you know, a display of some sort, it will display okay. I think I can break that, can I? I've forgotten how you break into it now, is it? There you go, space, yeah. So you can break into it and it comes back. But uh, it's just, I thought that you'd find that interesting there with regards to how it works on an LCD, you know, the sync um, becomes a problem again when it's loading. Um, but we'll do the obligatory hello world here. Stig's world tends to do this every time he tests one out on these, um, one of these old systems. Up cape spell. Hello spell checker. That's it, it's a bit slow there. 20, go to turn. Run. As you can see, that's working fine. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.